Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's see the problem associated with the ripple carry adder and let us understand the carry look ahead adder functionality. In the previous video, we have seen ripple carry adder and it's working. This is the block diagram of the ripple carry adder where the first full adder is going to utilize the C0, A0, B0 inputs and it's going to generate C1 and S0. And by using this C1, the second full adder is going to generate C2 and S1. Similarly, third full adder is going to generate C3 and S2 using A2, B2 and C2. And then fourth full adder is going to function to generate C4, S3. Here you can observe until this generation of C1, the second full adder is not going to perform and it will not generate C2. Until this C2 available to the third full adder, the third full adder has to wait for the generation of C2 and then C1. Similarly, fourth full adder is going to start giving C4 and S3 once it gets C3. So it is a time consuming process. Here the delay of generating carry is more. To avoid this delay in generating the final carry, we need to go for the new approach that is carry look ahead adder. Here as the name itself says, the carry will be looking ahead of the single bit full adder. In the previous approach in the ripple carry adder, the full adder is responsible for generating the carry. That functionality is avoided here. There will be a separate block here, carry look ahead block to generate the carries C1, C2, C3 and finally C4. So this avoids the delay in generating the carries at each and every full adders level. So let us understand how these carries will be generated. In this diagram you can see P0, G0, P1, G1, P2, G2 and P3, G3 signals. These are the two extra signals. P in the sense it is propagate signal and G in the sense it is generate signal. By using this propagate and generate signals, we can have a carry to the next block. So let us understand what is propagate and generate signals. This is the truth table of the full ladder. You can see A, B, C are the inputs and C out S is the sum and carry. So here the first combination of inputs 0, 0, 0, the output is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, the output is 0, 1. So as it goes, here we will be having generate, propagate and kill signals. So we need to understand how these signals are going to be generated here. You can observe A and B inputs and then C and then C out. So when A and B are 0, 0, if the carry is 0 or 1, if you look at the output, irrespective of the input and the carry, carry out will be 0. Means whatever the carry at the input side, this will not be going to the output, means it is 0. That's why we say even if carry is 1 here, it is killed and the output will be generated as 0. Means what? When the input is 0, 0, even if there is a carry in the previous stage, it will not be going to the next stage, carry will be 0. Similarly, if you look at 0 and 1 combination of inputs here, if the carry is 0 or 1, you can see 0 and 1 only propagated to the next stage. Means there is no change in the carry when the inputs are 0, 1. So we say here propagate signal is indicating the same carry is generated to the next stage also. So this is what propagate signal is. For 1, 0 inputs again, if 0, 1 is the carry here, same as it is 0, 1 will be propagated to the next stage without any change in the carry. So here also this propagate signal indicating this carry is propagated to the next stage which without changing. When it comes to 1 1 input, if the carry is 0 1 like this, here you can see it is 1 1 means even if there is no carry here, the carry will be generated. Here there is a carry, it is also generated. So this indicates a generate signal where if 1 1 is the input, we need to generate the carry to the next stage. We need to generate this one even if there is no carry in the previous stage. So this propagate signal indicates when there is an input like this, this propagate signal is 1. It means just pass the carry as it is 
to the next stage when 1 1 is the input so g is equal to 1 it means whatever the carry in the previous stage we need to generate the carry to 1 so by using these two extra signals we can avoid the delay in generating carry to the next stage so let us see the block diagram how it will be you can see here c naught is the input carry and a naught b naught is the first set of inputs lsbs these two generates p naught and g naught by using this p naught and g naught we are going to generate this carry to the next stage that you can see here this is c naught this is g naught this is p naught this p naught and g naught are generated here by using these two signals we are generating c1 actually this is c1 similarly this p1 and g1 generated by using a1 b1 depending on p1 and g1 here you can see this is p1 and this is g1 by using this we can generate this c2 similarly p2 and g2 are generated by using a2 b2 here this is p2 and this is g2 we can generate c3 similarly by using p3 and g3 we can generate c4 here in generation of c4 c3 c2 and c1 we are not at all using the previous carries by using the propagate signal and generate signal only we are going to generate these carries is that any dependency of carry in generating this p and g signals there is no dependency of carry you can see here this propagate signal is going to be calculated by using xr of the inputs similarly a and b is going to give the generate signal correspondingly c1 c2 c3 c4 are going to be generated and to get the sum obviously we need to have a xr gate of a b as well as the carry after generating this carry signals we can use that to generate the sums and also you can see here the expressions for generating c1 c2 c3 and c4 by using these expressions we can easily implement it in gates so the main purpose of using carry look ahead adder to eliminate the delay in carry generation in ripple carry adder this is the fastest adder compared to the ripple carry adder what we have seen thank you